welcome to Love Anything Art. Today I have four cane ideas for you. Using scrap clay. I will then show you some stuff that I made from the canes when I'm done. This is a project that I tried and eh, I don't know what I was doing. I don't know. But I wasted a lot of clay and I was actually really sad it broke my heart because it was in my mind gonna be so pretty oh it was gonna be awesome but um yeah so this is this is that and I'm gonna use it now in making something else out of it so use whatever scraps you got this was my epic fail that I did really like the colors though <laughs> Very bright and pretty, that pink and that teal bluish kind of a color in there. We will be doing some choppy chop in this video. I hope you like getting messy. This will be nice and messy. So just want to chop yours up. You can chop it into big, small, whatever size pieces that you want. While I'm doing that, I do want to welcome everyone to my channel. So glad you are here, so glad to see you. Please leave me a comment, please hit that subscribe button, and please watch my over 200 videos. Thank you. <laughs> I'm going to take my clay and place it on a surface that I don't mind getting all kinds of messy. Place that on there, and I'll be using this paint. Just a purple color. I ran out of black. I do need to go to the store and pick up some more black paint. But this is nice and dark and it's quite a pretty color. So I'll be using it. You can go really, really nice on yourself and use a little tool. Or you can just use your hands. <laughs> I'm using gloves though, because I don't want to get that messy. Mm -mm. You know, get that all nice and mixed up, and then kind of spread it out so it dries a little bit. You can also place that on another piece of paper so that it might dry a little bit faster so that the back and the front are not wet all at the same time. If everything's wet, it just takes longer to dry. I'm going to spread mine out into a long rectangular shape and then just press all the pieces together with my finger at first. No skill or technique here. Roll it up, do whatever you want, put it all in a ball, but you do need it to be flat. It's kind of pretty. You can cut it out and make something out of it like this. It looked like uh, pebbles or something. Like a rocky sidewalk. Just a side angle so you can see how thick that is. Some folks like seeing that. You can use a, another piece of paper on top to kind of burnish and flatten. You do want it to be flat. So however you want to do that. So that's fine. And then, oh, I have to go wash this now. Get her a bah. Oh, look at that. So clean, so beautiful, so dry. Ah, I'll cut it down. Just getting rid of those messy ends. I've rolled out some black clay just into a long strip. Basically, you need to cover one side of your flattened clay. I just thought this was easiest, and it kept coming out in a long strip, and I couldn't get it to the exact size. I don't know what I was doing or what was going on, but I could not get it to the same size as that backing. So I was just like, I'll just roll it out onto a strip, and then cut it down, and then fold it over like that, and stack it, and then voila! It'll be in the center. You're not going to be able to see it. You won't. So you just place that on there. 
just place that on there, trying not to get little air bubbles in there. Before you completely close up one side, I would just kind of flatten it a little bit. This will be the center ring, so you want it to be kind of a little bit thinner so you can roll it up. You know how that center in like the swirly, you just want it to be thinner so that it rolls up properly. <laughs> put it down there on the sides a little bit. And then again, you can put the black down over the top and then kind of just gently roll. Making it a little bit thinner. Cut away all the messies. Now you can roll it up to where it's in the center, the black clay, or you can roll it up to where it is on the outside. Either way you want to do it is totally up to you. You'll just see that your swirl will be on the inner rather than the outer, and vice versa if you do it the other way. I am going to have my black clay on the outside. Just kind of thinning it out a little bit more so I can roll it up. That initial roll is always the hardest. And then, I don't like it so big and chunky on the end, so just doing a little roll like I did in the center part. That's to make it a little bit thinner so you can wrap it around and it's just not a big chunk kind of on the end. It's more thin and gradual and then kind of blends and fades out. See? Like that. Ooh. I really like that. Looks pretty. And then you can roll it out so that it is a, a little bit thinner. That is mine. I say a little bit, it's quite a bit thinner. <laughs> Just going to cut away my messy ends so that I can cut the cane directly in half. And then we'll work on cane idea number two. I rolled mine out, so it goes from big to small or thin to thicker. Also, I've rolled out some white clay. You want to cut yours into even length pieces, just based on the width of the white clay. And you want to go gradually from small to large, large to small, whatever you want to do. And then I'm going to wrap each one of mine. And yes, you could have done this before cutting it up, if that is what you want.
And then I have the smallest one in the middle and then work my way to the larger one. And I have wrapped the entire thing in another layer of thin white clay. And then you'll just reduce that down a little bit. And then just kind of cut away your little messy in there. There we go. I'm just placing it together, kind of a little loop-de-doop there. That way I can cut it directly in half. You can just eyeball it too, or if you have a ruler, you're welcome to do that. I am not combining math and art. No, no, no. I won't, I won't, I won't. You'll place each of those side by side and then again cut those into half. And you'll kind of make like a little flower cane in a way. Put one in the center and then one all the way around until you have a hole. And then you can reduce that as thin as you would like. But the thinner you go, the less detail you have left in there. You can kind of still see the little crackly effect. And for the next cane, I actually want it to keep a little bit more of the beauty of the natural cane. So I'm not going to roll it out as thin. So that I can keep some of that beauty from the cane and the intricacy of it inside. You want to wrap that in some white clay or whatever color you choose. And again, I didn't really reduce it. Just wrapped it and rolled it a little bit. I took each one of those and cut it down into even length pieces and made this little flower cane again. This time I'm gonna have little spaces in between mine. So I just took some white clay. You could take a different color if you wanted to but I kind of just want it as a solid background. And you'll just take little pieces of that rolled out snake clay and place it in the grooves. And then again, 
you will want to fill up the spaces around the outside. And that way you have a nice flush cane all the way around the outside. And then the inside, the little holes are filled up too. You can roll that to reduce it a little bit. I did not reduce mine a whole lot. And I got to keep all those little pretty designs in the inside of the pattern, so I really like that. And this is a necklace idea from the cane. You can use whatever color you want that complements your scrap clay. I just thought this green looked really good with it. You'll just cut off pretty thick cuts from your cane. And you want to place those together and make a veneer out of it. Just manipulating it a little bit so that I can get the pieces together. Since my cane is round, it's a little tricky to get them stuck together. But no big deal. And this is the cutout for the heart. I'm just using it to burnish my piece. You can use whatever paper you want. This was just sitting here, so I didn't want to get up. <laughs> and you'll need it to be as big as the heart so that you can cut out the shape of the heart. So just make sure it is rolled out where you can cut out your shape. If you have a cutter, a heart cutter that's this large, you are free to use it. I prefer to make my own cutters. If you've watched any number of my videos, you probably have kind of found that out about me. And you are going to want your center heart to be slightly smaller than the outside one. And that way you can see the pretty clay on the back all around the rim. Kind of an easy way to do it would just be taking a little dotting tool and making your line. That way if you kind of mess it up you can just burnish that area and get the little spot out. But just go all the way around. You just want to cut off a really thin layer all around the outside. Just remember that you can always take off more clay but you can't put any back on. So, just keep that in mind as you are cutting. You can always cut away more. I really like the way that heart looks. It kind of has a reptilian kind of a look to it, like a snake skin in a way. But I don't know. I really like the way it came out. You will need to line that up there. Just getting your heart as centered as possible. And the green clay actually is a little bit thicker on that one side, so I'm going to need to cut that down. But you can manipulate it and perfect your heart. Make it look how you want it to look. I'll just use my fingers to kind of smooth out the edges. You can also do sanding afterwards, but I prefer to not sand as much. And I'm using this um, loaf pan thing that I actually have never used for food. <laughs> so I put it on the back so I can get that kind of bent look. You could bend the heart front ways or back, whatever you want to do. And I have resined my heart, front and back. 
and the sides. Just need to assemble it and drill a hole for my little pretty finding here. I like that little bling. It looks really, really nice with the necklace. And I came with a whole bunch in here, a bunch of bales. I just kind of went through there and picked out the one I thought looked best. And that's what it's about. Making something that you are proud of. And you should be proud of the stuff you make. I'm sure it's beautiful. Just make sure that when you're drilling your hole, of course you could do this before you baked, if you don't have a little drill, but if you're gonna do it afterwards, just make sure that the bale actually fits through and it's long enough to go into your hole and that your hole is big enough. If it's not big enough, you will need to drill a larger hole. I do recommend starting out with a smaller drill and working your way up. That way the clay doesn't get cracked or anything. You can slowly take out some of the clay as you're drilling through it. Put your bale on there, and then you just pick out whatever string or wire you want. I just chose black because it goes with everything. <laughs> just string that through there, make sure you measure it on your neck. And then the fun part, you get to accessorize and pick out your toggle and clasp. And of course, I have this little heart set here that goes perfect with my heart necklace. So, that's cute. It's got a little... I've dropped it, of course. It's got a little arrow, and it'll go through the heart and then attach. It's really cute. And then you just pick out all of your pieces to assemble your necklace, and I'll just do that here very briefly. And of course, whatever you do on one side of your necklace, you do on the other. It's like a mirror. And that is it for that project. I have a few more to go. I hope you like this one. And then my necklace idea number two. And I am trying to use up as much of my canes as possible so that I don't have a lot of scrap clay left because I have a whole bunch already. <laughs> so I'm just taking the last bit of that cane and kind of just cut it up into even length pieces. And again, you'll just need to make a veneer. You'll need to have made a thick enough piece to where you can cut out two circles. And I'm just going to measure mine because it's pretty close. I'm just going to put my divider there and then make sure the other side goes. Okay. And I did make enough for both sides, so I was really happy about that because I would have had to roll out the clay a little bit thinner and I really didn't want to go any thinner. Cut out my two shapes there. You can of smooth out the sides if you would like. I'm going to place back on my larger circle just around the outside so that I can cut out my inner circle. I just feel like it helps me get more of a precise cut. It generally works. Sometimes it doesn't, but <laughs> it did a pretty good job. There we go. I have a little donut for you. And then that center part that you cut out, you can just cut out a smaller shape. And basically what I want is a smaller piece to fit inside of the larger donut piece. 
I did need to even it up just a little bit. Just a little bit. There. And... I asked my husband's opinion. I thought it was a little bit too busy with that piece in the middle. So I was trying to decide what piece I could use, what cane, or what color, or what pattern. So I ultimately decided on the cane that I made, cutting out the center after I cut off a slice. So that was a center piece there. And then I just used that for the center of this necklace I'm gonna make. Just thought it was less busy and it would kind of stand out a little bit more and it would also still look good with the pattern. <laughs> I'm placing the backing, the one that I did not cut out the circle from, on the spoon on the inside where the wonderful delicious soup would go. And then I am going to bake that. Nice and baked, hard, good, ready to go. And now I can place on my top part. If you feel more comfortable, you can use some bacon bond to get that to bond while it bakes. Just go around. You don't need a whole lot, just a little bit. You got your little flying saucer there. And just want to go around the outside and make sure it lines up pretty good. I am going to stretch mine out just a little bit more because I do want it to dome up towards the top a little bit more. So I need just a little bit of extra clay to accomplish this. So just kind of stretching it out between my fingers ever so gently. And you'll place that on there, kind of line it up. You can leave the sides unfinished so to speak, but I think it looks best when it's nice and blended. So I'm just gonna go around and kind of pinch it together a little bit and smooth it out with my fingers, perfect it. And because of the pattern on the cane, you can't really tell. It's not like totally noticeable or, ew, that looks so icky. It looks really nice, it came out really nice. And again, I put that on the spoon and I baked it. And then I also need to bake my centerpiece. So I have a stick pin and I'm going to just poke it through one side, not coming out completely the back side. Just enough to get it punctured into the clay so that we can glue it after baking. Okay, I have my pieces, they're baked. Ooh, I just like to stare at it. Just marvel at its beauty. <laughs> and then the little flat disc for the middle. Kind of like a little suspended piece. You'll need to cut that down to size. So I'm just placing the flat part down into the clay. And I'm gonna wanna cut it off right at the point where it comes up and over the side there. So we just cut that off. And remember you can always cut away more but you can't put me back on. So I always give a little bit for measure. And then, if it works out, it works out. And, of course, we did not poke a hole into the back part of the clay before baking, so I'm just going to use my drill. But if you are watching this and don't have a drill, you can do this before baking. Again, you don't want to go all the way through. Just find the center and kind of drill down a little bit. We're going to be using glue and resin so it will stick in there, the stick pin, when we're done. Just make sure it fits in there, and it will. But I do need to resin the inside before officially putting this piece down in there. So, I'm going to glue in the stick pin, the bottom part that goes down into the backing of the necklace. And 
And then the tricky part, if you have shaky hands like me, is just getting that little stick pin in there and in the center. And getting it to dry. <laughs> while it stands up in the center. There we go. And I'm just going to use some of this UV resin and I will resin the inside there. And now it's nice and sturdy there in the center. I can go ahead and resin my piece. The sides and the top are all that I need to resin since the backing is going to be facing the inside of the clay. And then I'm going to go ahead and resin the top now. I do want it to be nice and domed. I resined the outside and the back of my piece also. And then I'm going to drill a hole for my bale. Of course, again, you could have done all that before baking. It's just a little bit more tricky since the top and the bottom weren't baked together, but it can be done. And that is my piece. I really like it. I like how the center part looks suspended. It's not connected to anything. I really like that. So, And the two patterns look really good together. And I have a necklace number three for you. Just be using some of the cane that I made again. I'm going to make a two-sided heart, I guess you could call it. One side or one part of it will be one pattern and then the other one will be the other pattern. So just need to cut off pieces and just make sure that you have enough for whatever you're cutting out. And of course I just freehanded making this little heart cutout pattern. But again you can use any cutout shapes that you have. And this one I just really had a lot of fun with, just kind of letting my imagination go and whatever came out, came out. I'm just going to clean off all of the little messies that I have on there with some alcohol ink. I do need to make my heart a little bit thicker, so I am going to use all of the scraps, roll it up, there is no rhyme or reason to it, just roll it until it looks so swirly and beautiful, however you want it to look. It'll be the backing, so just place your heart on there, just make sure it's large enough, of course, and then you can use your heart template and cut around it and have your backing.
And I've made my backing. And now all I have to do is fix the seam that's left from the two pieces of clay that come together. So I just took some gold, I thought it looked good with my clay, rolled it out, used my fingers to flatten it, and then just cut it down into a thinner strip. I'll place that across the seam. You can really use anything you want. You could probably have used maybe some beads. Beads would have looked nice. You could have pushed them down into the clay. But I just kind of let my imagination go, like I said, and just chose colors that I thought looked good and put some texturing on there. And I thought that it still didn't quite look complete. So I'm going to take some of this other gold clay. And then I'm going to roll it out. And I ended up getting these little swirl patterns from the mica shift in the clay. So it kind of came out really cool looking, like a candy cane almost. I'm gonna place that on either side of the other gold clay. And I'm gonna go down the side just to kind of wrap it around and complete it. Kind of looks like a present or like the top of a chocolate box. It comes out really cool though. <laughs> Basically just perfect it and kind of do whatever you want. Glitter would have been cool too, like on the clay there in the center. I'm going to put my hole in for my bale before I bake. You can do this after if you want. I baked it and I put resin on both sides of the heart. I did not put any on that center strip. And then I resined to the back. Came out very, very cool, I think. I hope you enjoyed these tutorials and found them useful. This is another little something something I made. Just very simple. <laughs> Thank you so much for watching. Bye.